The tongue is not the envelope of thought, but it is similar to it. Hello, my name is Nias Franklin, and today I would like to talk to you about the importance of inclusive and non-sexist language in education. What is inclusive and non-sexist language? How can people, especially teachers, make use of this type of language in everyday society? The answer is simple. Throughout my stay in Mexico, I have noticed that the use of Spanish language has some differences with respect to my mother tongue. One of them, and the most uh, notable, is the use of language that refers to individuals or objects in a masculine or feminine manner. Personally for me, it has been a bit complicated to understand Spanish at first, since in my home country the style of dialect does not exist. This is where one of the biggest differences in the use of inclusive and non-sexist language lies between English and Spanish. In English, that is to say, people that speak in English language make use of pronouns that have the same uh, meaning for both sexes. Even when making translations from English to Spanish, you will notice that English speakers use a single word to refer to one person or thing. By adding gender tones, for instance, in English, the language can become somewhat confusing and in some cases offensive. Now, the Spanish language uses a masculine form which is represented in other languages. For example, French, Italian, Arabic, just to name a few. I would like to give my point of view on how the Spanish and English languages can and should work together. Now we can assume an important fact. At birth, from the moment a human being is uh, about to enter this world, we have technology that can tell us the sex of the newborn and we can speculate the characteristics and personality and preferences the newborn will have due to the different genres and gender from the mother and the father. Thus. We can understand that even before birth, we are already providing in a certain way the characteristics that the child would have. However, as the authors Escudero, Pulido, and Venegares mention about the differences between both sexes, genes are contingent. Humans are born with them and they are universal. That is to say, they are the same for all people. Furthermore, to refer to biological differences, since all humans are male or female, this determines our personality and our orientation. This is why the actions or thoughts of a person do not determine their sex. We can say that language is one of the most important factors that determine discrimination within our society. One can say something to someone else that implies a negativity about the person, and thus you have created a hostile perception of that individual. Our thought processes are born through language, or rather, thought can be regarded as the reflection of use of our language. Let's focus on the importance of inclusive and non-sexist language within the educational field. As educational professors, we must take into account the correct use of language with, uh, within a classroom so as to not create the type of confusion to gender differences and discrimination. It is also important to mention that the processes of gender socialization can be found in other places of development. The first instance begins with a person's family. How a person is raised can, dic uh, can dictate what his or her gender identity can be. We should always do a needs analysis of our students to determine what orientation and what background he or she has in order to use inclusive language in the classroom. Making a needs analysis of our students before the start of each school cycle is also important to know what material to teach other students and also to avoid offensive behaviors such as bullying inside and outside of our schools. It is for this reason that I am addressing this issue of the use of inclusive language and non-sexist language in the educational field. Another example of inclusive language and non-sexist language can be noted in the materials used in class, such as books. Books can be misrepresented, misrepresented by using the female gender and are almost always related to homework. The word home, based on 20th century societal standards, implies where women are most prominent. This word, as on the contrary to masculine nouns, such as work, is gender-based. The word work implies a figure of authority and strength within society, which is why they are used in a more masculine approach. Due to these types of cases, it is vitally important to teach our students that we are all equal and that we begin to do this with the implication of both masculine and feminine words. We should teach that there is nothing wrong with a man being able to perform household chores, homework, or a woman obtaining a degree uh, as an engineer or neuroscientist work. In short, language is a reflection of our thinking. Our thinking makes us human. As humans, 
We express ourselves through language and that's what makes us different from all other creatures. Let's make a real change by teaching that we are all equal. Let's do this uh, so that everyone can achieve what their heart desires. Thank you so much for your attention.